We are good. So thank you uh, for joining us today. This is Preston Cadell, who's with us from Ponat Yacht Cruises and Expeditions. And he's going to be sharing with you some really amazing uh, experiences available um, throughout the world. But we're going to focus a little on Arctic and Antarctic today. So um, Preston, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much, Nora, and thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, and I hope you have fun during this presentation. <laughs> I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, Antarctica and Arctic sailing and how it's different from sailing in other parts of the world, and a little bit more information about us as well. My name is Preston Cadell. Um, I work for Panant Yacht Cruises and Expeditions. So we are going to start with a little bit of an overview of the fleet itself and uh, just kind of look at expedition cruising in general. So Panant is a 12-ship uh, fleet with a small amount of passengers, so a maximum size of 264 passengers. And we specialize in polar expedition cruising. So what is polar expedition cruising? Um, that's whenever you sail to areas that have a lot of ice. So that would be places like Alaska, the Arctic, um, Scandinavia, Norway, Greenland, Iceland, and then down in Antarctica. So sailing in these areas requires a little bit of a, of a different touch than in sailing in most parts of the world, but the end result is more than worth it. It's an absolutely unforgettable experience. So here's a little bit of a look at the, um, the globe and where we sail to and where expedition sailing is done in general. So if you can see on the map, the areas that are in blue, that's uh, down in Antarctica and up in the blue, which is the northern part of North America and uh, Europe, uh, those are the areas that constitute polar uh, expedition cruising. So in Antarctica, uh, most expedition ships, including our own, sail from Ushuaia, which is the southern capital of Argentina, and it tends to do uh, 10 to 21 day itineraries in Antarctica. So if you are planning on sailing in Antarctica, it does typically take a little bit more time than your average cruise, but of course that's more than worth it because you're sailing in one of the most remote and beautiful destinations on the planet. Now, if you would like to sail in the Arctic, uh, those range from anywhere from 7 to 28 days. So depending on where you want to sail and what you want to see, there is a large variety of itineraries for you to choose from. And uh, these departures can sail from Europe, uh, usually in places like Long Yerbrun, which is in Norway, uh, or they can sail in Alaska, like from Juneau or even from Seattle. Uh, there's many different areas from Reykjavik, Reykjavik in Iceland. Uh, so there's quite a few different destinations for you to depart from. So we're an all-inclusive cruise. Uh, that means everything is included on board um, our itineraries. That includes the open bar, 24-hour uh, room service, Wi-Fi, which is fantastic. Uh, but the feature that I want to focus on most are the shore landings. So whenever you're sailing in a, in a cold area like in Antarctica or an Arctic, that typically requires an expedition style of cruise. Uh, the way that that's different from a cruise that you might be familiar with is that on a typical cruise, you will have an a la carte selection of tours you choose the one that you like and then you go on that tour that day. Now, whenever you're sailing in a place like Antarctica or the Arctic, uh, there are more restrictions involved. Uh, it's very important for us to protect the environment. And uh, of course, there are weather factors as well. So what we do is we call we do what we call shore landings. So instead of um, using a big tender that holds 30 to 40 passengers, we use little Zodiacs that hold only about 10 to 12 people at a time. Uh, these Zodiacs are very maneuverable. Uh, they can go to many places where, where larger ships and boats cannot, um, and that makes them a lot more flexible. Uh, now, those are included in the price of your fare. So you're typically going to do two shore landings per day. You're going to go in the morning or in the afternoon after breakfast or lunch. You're going to see something spectacular, whether it be wildlife, glaciers, mountains, fjords, whatever it happens to be. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And then you come back to the ship after three or four hours to kind of relax and get ready for your next tour, or if you're done for the day, to just relax. Um, you don't really have a choice of which tour you want to go on. That is what's available. They've been structured very carefully for your protection, also to make sure that you get the most out of your out of your landing. So as a result, um, it is included in the price of your fare. You don't have to worry about anything once you come on board. 
So it's very important uh, to protect the environment when we go to places like the Arctic and Antarctica. And uh, Panan in particular takes uh, a lot of pride in protecting the environment. Uh, regardless of how you get down to the Arctic or Antarctica, uh, you'll definitely notice that it's everybody takes very, very good care of the area where they are. So for example, we don't do, um, we don't drop our anchor unless we have to. So of course we do have an anchor on board and we can use it if we need to, but what we like to do down there is called dynamic positioning. So we position the ship to the area to where it gets the least amount of resistance from the wind. We have little turbines on the ship, uh, almost like a trolley that will keep that ship in place. Um, and then that's where we debark our zodiacs. So the nice thing about this is we're not um, damaging the environment around us because we're not dropping anything into the water. Um, at the same time, we have a silent electropropulsion system. There is a lot of wildlife down in Antarctica. You see it everywhere and it's stunningly beautiful. We don't wanna disturb this wildlife. They're not used to people. They have a very specific way of life. So our engines are almost completely silent so that we're never disturbing what's around us. So if you want to go to an Arctic area or an Antarctic area, um, I definitely recommend using a smaller ship. Uh, these are our sister ships. They hold 264 passengers, and that's about as large as a ship that you want to go on into an area like this. Uh, the reason for that is that these smaller ships can get into many more areas than a larger ship can. So um, when you're going to a place like Antarctica, it is a bucket list, once in a lifetime type of destination. You definitely want to get the most out of your trip. So I recommend uh, taking a smaller ship just because they can get into those little hard to reach places. And that makes a huge difference in your experience. This is our Ponan Explorer class. So this is our mid-level size. There are 184 passengers. So again, smaller luxury. You get a wonderful onboard experience with comfort and wonderful food and service. But more important, you get to go to all those little hidden destinations that you might otherwise miss. And you get to see things that you'll never get to see otherwise. So this is a look at Lakama at Charcot. This is our polar exploration vessel. So whenever you're going to a wonderful area like the Arctic or Antarctica, um, it, takes it takes special requirements. This ship, as you can see, has a very pointed hull in the front. That cuts through ice. So this ship right now is in uh, the Arctic. And uh, what happens is whenever uh, your ship is sailing through ice, the, uh, the ice is not set in a block. Uh, think of it more like ice cubes. So whenever you sail through it, it actually goes right back to the way that it was before. Um, very interesting, uh, a very unique experience when it comes to sailing. And the good thing is because of the way that this uh, ship is designed, uh, you're not damaging any ice whenever you're sailing through it. So a look at some of our onboard facilities. Uh, we have connecting staterooms. Uh, we travel in great comfort. Uh, our staterooms range from about 800 square feet down to about 200 square feet. An important thing is that it's 100% balcony. And I can't stress this enough. If you're going to be sailing in a place like Antarctica or the Arctic, you definitely want to have a balcony or at least a window because it makes a huge difference. Uh, we hug the shorelines as closely as we can. Uh, most ships do because they wanna get the most out of their experience. Uh, so you're always going to see something beautiful outside of your window, whether it's an iceberg, a mountain, something of that nature. So you don't even have to be outside to see a lot of this. You can be in your stateroom if you have a nice balcony and you can just kind of enjoy it from, from your own sofa or a chair. So look at a couple of our other staterooms as you can see big, beautiful balconies. So you'll always be able to see outside. We really stress having windows all over the ship so that you can always see outside. This is so important whenever you're in a remote destination area like in Antarctica. Uh, this is our observatory lounge right above the bridge. You always get the opportunity to see outside. You're getting the same view here that the sailors and the captain are getting in the bridge below you. So the nice thing is after you're done for the day and you're ready to go to your next destination, you're basically right there with the crew as you, can, as you depart to your next destination. Uh, it's a really nice little peek behind the curtain. This is our panoramic restaurant, a beautiful um, restaurant area in the aft part of the ship. So the panoramic restaurant serves all sorts of different cuisine, whether it's local, you'll get a lot of uh, very exclusive fish and seafood if you're traveling to an Arctic or Antarctic destination. Um, you also get wonderful European style fare. Uh, if you just want something a little bit more meaty, you know, uh, something American like a burger or a hot dog or a pizza, that's always available as well, of course. 
So this is our theater where uh, lectures are done in the evening. So whenever you're traveling in a remote destination, it's always um, um, it's always important to know a little bit more about where you're traveling to. It's so remote and different and so few people have traveled to these areas uh, that you definitely want to know more. I can guarantee you that during your tour at some time of the day, you're going to see something that you're going to want to know more about. That's what these lectures are for. In the evening, our naturalists will come in here and they'll uh, give you a 45 minute to one hour lecture about something that you've either seen that day or something that you're going to see in the coming days. So the good thing is, is if you have questions and you don't have the opportunity to ask your um, to ask your tour manager about it, don't worry about that. They're probably going to cover it in the evenings. So you'll uh, learn what you want to know. Of course, it's always important to have spa service <laughs> after a long, hard day of, uh, of hiking or um, being in the Zodiac or uh, whatever you're doing on your tour. And this is our bridge. So if you're in the observatory lounge, you're getting the same view of this bridge. So this is, of course, where the captain and the sailors um, navigate the ship. Uh, the good thing is with Panan, we have an open bridge policy. So this means that unless the ship is in active operation, you get the opportunity to come in here and, and chat with the captains and the sailors anytime that you want to. They're very friendly. They love to talk about what they're doing. If you're interested in, in getting a peek behind the curtain and how a cruise ship operates or just how a ship operates in, in uncharted waters, this is an amazing opportunity to be able to do that. Ask all the questions that you want. The captain and the sailors will be more than happy to answer them. So this is a look at the zodiacs. So whenever you're sailing in Antarctica, uh, you're not able to do it in a, in a larger tender. Uh, instead, you have to use these small inflatable zodiacs. There are 16 of them on our ships. And what you do is you walk down the stairway. The zodiacs will be on this platform, which will already be raised above the water. You get in, and then you lower yourself and you zip off to your destination. Uh, now, if you've ever done an expedition itinerary, then you'll know that um, a lot of the times you are not able to do something like this. Instead, you have to hold someone's hand and kind of lower yourself into the zodiac it's already already in the water and uh, if the water's choppy then then that can be a little bit of an adventure um, however with our ships we don't have to go through that instead we have this platform you can get in the zodiac and make yourself comfortable and secure before you ever touch the water so that is a very nice perk to have our Blue Eye Underwater Lounge. Uh, this is an exclusive uh, feature of our Explorer class ships, a multi-sensory underwater lounge that allows you to see wildlife underwater. Uh, this little area is under the ship and it's only accessible by elevator. When you walk into this area, there are these 17 foot across by five foot tall windows on both sides of the lounge. Um, the glass that uh, these windows are made out of is actually stronger than the steel that's around it. Uh, there's these little apparatuses outside of the windows that shine light out into the ocean and it attracts sea life to you. So oftentimes when you're down there enjoying a cocktail in the evenings, um, penguins and, and dolphins and other animals like that will swim up to you because they're just as curious about you as you are about them. So this is a wonderful way to be able to experience that wildlife in a completely different way. There's just another beautiful view. And I have a short video to kind of give you an idea of what you would see um, if you decided to go down to one of these polar areas. As you can see, uh, staggeringly beautiful. And uh, a little funny thing about penguins themselves, they're very curious. Uh, they're not used to having people around. So um, almost every 
Antarctic itinerary will have some kind of a penguin sighting with it. Um, and the funny thing is, if you get up close to them, they usually walk up to you and they might even try to steal something from your purse because they're they're cheeky and they're very curious, um, just really friendly animals and it's a very unique wildlife experience. So why would you want to sail on something like Le Comet at Charcot? What is the, the attraction? The attraction is that um, this expedition ship and all polar expedition ships are specifically equipped to sail in these polar areas. So they can explore areas that normal cruise ships can't. So this is just a look at the interior of the vessel. As you can see, stunningly beautiful. This back deck is my favorite part of the ship. Um, the two pools, which we call the Blue Lagoon, that's actually he a heated pool and it's heated directly from our engines with renewable energy. Uh, as you can see, that beautiful fire pit is a wonderful place for you to just relax and um, just kind of enjoy the day. If you're in the Arctic, um, you often see the northern lights in the evening, Australis Borealis. So um, that's always a really fun thing to see. And this is a perfect destination to do that. Now, just because you're going to remote area doesn't mean that you are, are not going to have comfort. Uh, so as you can see, this includes all of the wonderful, luxurious areas on board of a cruise ship that you're used to. Uh, my favorite one is that snow room <laughs> in the bottom. Uh, so this is um, exclusive to us. Um, and this is good for your cardiovascular system. At least this is what I've been told. So when you go in and um, you experience that snow for a short period of time, you get out and warm up, you go in again and you, you kind of repeat this process. It's supposed to be very good for your heart, for your blood flow. Uh, personally, I will leave it up to you to tell me how this experience is. But um, if you have a brave nature, then you're definitely gonna wanna experience that. So these are just some photos of uh, activities that you can expect to do in a place like Antarctica. So Antarctica is a great place to go kayaking. It's actually my personal favorite thing to do when I'm down there. As you can see there, it's a great way to get really up close to this wonderful, wonderful scenery. Um, and the, of course, we'll make sure that the, uh, that the water is, is good to kayak in. So this is weather permitting, but uh, assuming that that's the case, I cannot recommend this enough. It is a wonderful way to get really up close to some wonderful, um, wonderful scenery. Uh, we have Zodiac cruising. So sometimes we'll just take our Zodiac and we'll just go zipping through little fjords and channels and rivers. Um, so much of Antarctica is unexplored and you never really know what you're going to find but I can guarantee it's going to be pretty. So sometimes we just do that. We take the Zodiac and we just explore. Sometimes you might even go to areas where nobody else has ever been to. Uh, of course, there is hiking involved um, if you like physical exercise. So what we do is whenever we land, um, we can choose a few different paths. Some that are a little bit more moderate, some that are a little bit more strenuous. So if um, you don't want to walk too much, then I would not worry about that. There are going to be paths that are very simple and flat. However, if you want to work for it and you want to see some amazing places and you just like to, to do this kind of exercise, then there's definitely going to be more challenging uh, trails for you as well. So regardless uh, of what your preference is, we're going to have an option for you. We have the polar plunge. So if you are very brave, then you can always uh, dive in and experience the water for yourself. Uh, again, there are supposed to be some terrific health benefits to this as well. Um, so if you'd like to, to experience that, that is available to you. So I'd like to show you a few little itineraries now for both the Arctic and Antarctica, just to give you an idea of where, would you, where you would be visiting. So this one is called the Geographic North Pole. So we sail in the Arctic during our seasons. So our summers, the season usually begins in, um, I would say, May, and it will end in September. After that, we no longer do the Arctic. Instead, we sail down and we do Antarctica. Now, the reason why you want to visit the North Pole during this time of year, our summers, is for two reasons. Uh, for one thing, the weather, of course. It gets very, very cold uh, whenever you're in um, the Arctic winter. And the other reason is sunlight. Um, there are only a few hours of sunlight per day during the winter season here. So in all honesty, if you go, you're not going to see a ton. You've got a couple of hours at best of sunlight, and then it is dark the rest of the year. So you definitely want to travel during our summers if you're planning on taking this cruise. Now, conversely, if you're going to be in Antarctica down south, their season is the opposite of ours because they're south of the equator. So the season in Antarctica starts um, probably in around September, and it goes to about March. Um, and for the same reasons, of course, during their winters, it's very cold. There is a lot more ice in the water, so it is not as safe to sail. And you're really not going to see a lot due to the lack of sunlight. So this itinerary is called the Geographic North Pole. 
you're going to be one of the few people in the world to reach the North Pole. Um, this was actually not even possible by cruise ship until very recently. Some of the animals that you can expect to see in an itinerary like this would be polar bears, Arctic foxes, uh, reindeer, walruses, lots of whales. So try to keep this rule in mind. If you're in the Arctic, you're seeing polar bears. And if you're the, in the Antarctic, you're seeing penguins. <laughs> uh, all penguins live south of the equator. So if you want to see them, then you would need to go south for that. Um, however, there is an amazing variety of wildlife here in the North Pole. Uh, the difference in terms of the um, wildlife in the Arctic and in the Antarctic is that it is, a, it is a little bit more remote in the Arctic. So you have to work a little harder to see wildlife. Uh, now in Antarctica, wildlife is all over the place. You pretty much can't avoid it. But here, it, it, there's definitely a sense of satisfaction when you do get that glimpse of that walrus or, or that polar bear or uh, some species of whale. Um, it, it, there's a sense of tranquility and, there, and remoteness whenever you see that. So conversely, this is an Antarctic itinerary, the total eclipse in the Weddell Sea. So as you can see, it takes place during our winter season and it departs from Ushuaia, the southern capital of Argentina. Now, I have heard a lot about the crossing of the Drake Passage. Um, it, it can be infamous for, for rough weather. Uh, my advice would be just to take any precautions that you would take in any other part of the world. Um, it's really not too bad from, from my personal experience. Uh, however, if you do uh, get motion sickness or seasickness, then you may want to take some tablets or, or something that can assist you with that. Normally, the voyage takes about two days each way. Uh, now, this itinerary is special because you're going to be seeing an eclipse from the Weddell Sea, which is a very remote part of Antarctica where not a lot of cruise ships go to. The difference with this um, particular eclipse is that it is going to be traveling in the opposite direction of a typical eclipse. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, it's just another eclipse, I see them all the time, it's not going to be the same in this case. Um, this eclipse is special, it only happens once every while, and the Weddell Sea is going to be the only place on the planet where you're going to be able to see it completely uncovered. So it's going to be an eclipse that you've never seen before, I, I can guarantee you that. Just be careful not to look directly at it, <laughs> because it, that can be difficult for your eyes. But um, of course, with sunglasses or something like that, you'll be able to see it very clearly, and it's going to be an absolutely incredible experience. So should you take your children on a voyage like this to Antarctica or the Arctic? Uh, my recommendation would be if your child is older than five years, then that's usually not an issue at all. Um, if you have a family with a younger child who is getting close to that minimum, but they may not quite be there at that time, please don't be discouraged. Uh, please reach out to your local travel advisor. Your travel advisor will get in touch with us directly and uh, we can ask the captain. The captain is the one who's in charge of everybody at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's their responsibility. So um, they'll give you the okay. Um, and honestly, my personal experience is that if your child is getting close to that minimum age, it's normally not an issue. So please don't be discouraged if this is the case. Just reach out to your advisor and I'm sure they can assist you with that. So is it safe to, to, to cruise again? Um, I would say yes. We have implemented many things on board uh, to protect our guests for future sailings. So this is done both prior to boarding and once you're on board itself. So we require a few different things. Um, we require a, a PC test um, three days before boarding. Uh, we require you to fill out a health questionnaire. We, we, we will check your temperature before you come on board. Once you're on board, if you start to feel symptoms or you just feel like you may be ill, we do have COVID tests on board that we can administer to you. And in the meantime, we do have a section of the ship that is basically an isolation board. Uh, it is a stateroom. It's uh, away from the rest of our passengers and our crew. And we can put you in there. We can put any guest who, who is feeling symptoms in there just so that they can, they can be isolated in comfort while, uh, while we make sure that they're okay. Um, our ventilation system has been completely changed on board, which is great. Uh, so we heard a lot of concerns that um, a lot of people would be rebreathing air that was in other staterooms. That is not going to be the case with us. Um, our ventilation system has been completely redesigned. It is um, designed to con constantly expel old air and bring in new air from outside. So you don't have to worry about rebreathing air from other passengers. You're going to be breathing fresh air at all times. And that is my overview and presentation. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be with us here today. And I can open the floor to, to questions and hand it back to Nora. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Great presentation. It gets me so excited to think about um, <laughs> traveling again and especially in the Arctic. If anyone has any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat and I will be um, your facilitator. Otherwise, you can reach out to your advisor at Travel Leaders Market Square. Uh, we would love to help you organize one of these cruises coming up here um, very soon. I don't see any questions in the chat right now. One of the questions that came up earlier is, um, I know that you're a French company um, and a lot of your cruises um, might have um, more Europeans on them. Is English widely spoken? Yes, it is. Uh, North America is actually our largest market now. Uh, and we still have a large uh, client base from, from all over the world, but we've definitely focused more on the English. So English is the 1A, it's spoken with everything. So um, our lectures, our announcements, uh, our labeling, our shows, all of that is done in English now. So that will not be a problem. Uh, please don't be concerned about uh, feeling out of place on a European line, that's, that's not the case. What I like is that um, you're getting a little bit more of a Euro, Eurocentric style as opposed to most American luxury brands, but you're still very welcome. They love to have you on board. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you again so much. Everybody enjoy your afternoon and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye, thank you.